As you know, if you've watched for a while, we pre-freeze almost everything. There's a few times that we go straight onto the freeze dryer trays, but that's only in certain circumstances like a rush job or we haven't been freeze drying much for a little while because of whatever issue. And so we're going directly onto the trays. But usually we pre-freeze. And one of the ways we pre-freeze is the seven by seven pans. And the other way is to spread them out onto cookie sheets and then transfer them into Ziploc bags until they're, they're turned. So these are going to get put into zipper bags and wait their turn in the freeze dryer, which could be pretty soon on this batch. But anyway, so these are some more of the peaches. And this is one that I did do with more of the ascorbic acid or vitamin C sprinkled on them and kind of mixed around. I need to get them into the bags quickly so they don't thaw out at all. This tray is a little bit more full, so they're going to be stuck together more. So 32, a little over 3,200 grams. Those five trays were about seven pounds. So when we do that batch, we'll have about seven pounds in that batch, uh, unless we get some more peaches before that. I'm finally getting around to starting the next batch of peaches. This is batch number five, I think, and more peaches are arriving at home later this evening. So I wanted to get these in the freeze dryer and get them freeze drying. And this is, I don't know how many pounds. Don't go away. It's about seven and a quarter pounds peaches for this batch. I'm going to get this ready. So this has been sitting here waiting for, I think the last batch was about four or five days ago. Uh, I've been kind of unable to get the next batch in there. They're still in the big two gallon bag waiting in the freezer. So now let's get them started. So I'll get the disc in place and it's still, the thermometer that's in the side shows that it's uh, just about 75 degrees down here still. So it's relatively warm, but it's definitely starting to cool down going to make sure that I have a complete ring around the seal. It's been doing perfectly lately, but right now there's a little bit of spaces in the seal ring. So I'm just using my little frosting spatula and just shifting it forward just enough to get a complete ring. Okay, we've got a complete ring. I'm starting it using Customize, and I have it permanently set up so that it's automatically at a six hour freeze time and an 11 hour final dry time so that it's got plenty of final dry. And then I still do the dry check, of course. So starting with custom, I've got my machine set for a shelf temperature of 120 and I did close the drain valve or I will. And now it's starting the six hour freeze time. Uh, with the peaches, since they're kind of sugary, I like to make sure that they really get good and cold. So I'll double check the thermometers that I'm going to put in the peaches to make sure that it's at least 20 below or 30 below before I let that freeze uh, timer run out. If it's not cold enough, I'll add more time before I let it start freeze drying. We'll be back as soon as this is cool enough and get the peaches on the trays. It's been a week since we started the last batch of peaches. Now I'm finally getting around to this batch of peaches. So this is our fifth batch of peaches for this year. We just got another small box of peaches. Uh, so we may or may not freeze dry those. I think it's 35, 36 of them. We may use them for making some peach cobbler just to eat, or we may freeze dry them. Depends on how they look and how many there are. Let's get the ones that we took off the cookie sheets, the thin sliced ones that we sliced with the spam slicer. Get those on the freeze dryer trays and get them into the freeze dryer. The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling for a couple hours now, I think. Uh, we had to go out for a walk and do other stuff. It's plenty cold now and ready to get the peaches in. Let's go get them. So there's our bag of peaches and that was about seven and a half pounds. To, to get them evenly on the trays, I need to do about 1,568 grams per tray, more or less. 
And I'm just using the same parchments as I used last time. I just wiped them off. They had peaches on. They're going to have peaches on again. And some people say, why not use the silicone mat? Nothing wrong with the silicone mats. They're a great way to go. They do cost more and you do have to wash them. So they cost more over time, I think, because I can usually use these more than once, especially for vegetables or something that doesn't leave any residue. I can wipe them off and use them again. Uh, whereas silicone mats, you also have to build in the cost or count the costs of washing them. So they're not just a buy once and you're done. You still have to maintain them. Okay, starting with tray four. And of course, I already have the tear weights on these, so I don't need to weigh them up front. I can get them fairly well loaded. And when I get kind of close, then I'll check it. So I'll try to get about a fourth of these on this tray. And I really like these thin sliced ones. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick weighing to see how close we are, and then we can get them kind of laid out the way we want them. So I need another 100 grams. Okay, that's about a fourth of the total. So we'll get these kind of spread out. And this is going to be a taller batch. And you could spend time really getting them level and uh, maybe shingling them or something. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to try to get them fairly even, recognizing that it will take longer to dry because they're going to be taller. We'll get the weight on that, 1567. Going to add a thermometer in there. And tuck it between some of the peaches. I'm trying to make sure it's covered by peach top and bottom. That should work. Same thing for tray three. And you could spend the time, as I mentioned, kind of putting them on there shingled up like we did that one set. But I don't know that it's worth the time. Could be. But I really don't want to spend too much time because they're going to get warm. 1562. 1576. So those are all ready to go. Let's go to the freeze dryer and get them in. These are over at the freeze dryer now. Let's get them in. I turned this on to pre-freeze about three hours ago. I thought I'd be back in about an hour when it was cold enough. Well, it took three hours total. And now it says negative 44. The, my thermometer on the side says negative 40 it's definitely cold enough to put them in. I just like it to get colder than the food that I'm putting in. So if my freezer is five degrees, I want that to be lower than five degrees and dropping so that it doesn't warm the food up. So we'll get them in. Okay, those are in there. It has a good seal ring all the way around. It should be good to go. I will add additional time to the freeze because it took me so long to get them in there and I want those peaches to have time to really get cold. So I'm going to add one more hour. So that'll be a total of seven freeze hours for this batch. Usually with pre-frozen stuff, it needs less than six, sometimes as low as three or four because it chills quickly. And with the food already frozen, it doesn't take very long to finish up. So I'll add one more hour. And I'll check it um, in three or four, about three hours to see if it needs more time or if I can take that hour back off and have it start then. One last thing, gloves. Occasionally, rarely, I get a comment that says, wear gloves or you should wear gloves. No, I shouldn't. I should wear gloves when I feel it's necessary and only then. Anybody else can wear gloves all day long if they want to. I do for really cold things when I have to manipulate them for a while, or if it's sticky or messy, uh, then I do. Otherwise, I treat it like it's my own food that I'm going to use. When I'm making my own sandwich, I usually don't put on gloves. We'll be back in about two days when this is finished. So don't go away, it'll be just a second. This batch of peaches, batch 640, has been in there for about 42 hours. It's probably done, but of course we're going to do the dry check. So we'll bypass the last five minutes, uh, get them out, weigh them, and put them back in for at least two hours. I might go longer because I have some other things I'm supposed to be doing today. So first, let's stop the machine and get them out. So open the drain valve. 
And as soon as the pressures are equalized, we can get the door open. Okay, tray one. And they're still warm, but not real hot because it had about 10 minutes to cool down. Okay, 885, tray two. 883, and then we're going to switch the tray positions. We'll put tray two up on top where it's just slightly cooler than tray two position most of the time. And then tray one will come down here. Those look great. These are those thin sliced ones. I'm real happy with those. That one's one of the hand cut ones. So probably snack on that later. Tray three, 872 and tray four. And tray four is the coldest spot, 879. And frankly, I like the look of them better. I'm going to do the next batch and turn the, well, let's get these in there first, and then we'll talk about that. Tray four will come up a spot, and then tray three will come down a spot. Okay, get that closed up and get it shut. Now, those are going back in, and I'll give it at least three hours actually because I've got a little project I'm trying to work on and then if we get done early we can come back to this after two hours and check it. I did notice that the middle two trays which now are on the top and bottom I like the color better. So I'm going to do the next batch um, and turn the freeze dryer temperature the the tray heaters down to maybe 110, 105, 110. It will take longer to freeze dry, but I wanna see what they look like. We'll restart this and then we'll be back in a couple hours. So add more dry time, close the drain valve, did, continue, and restart. And bumping that up, actually I put it for four hours because I can lower it back down easily. Uh, and I can add more time at any time also, but what if I'm not here right then? So we'll see you in just a minute when these have had a chance to do the dry check. So don't go away. It's about three and a half hours later and I'm back. So now let's get them out of the freeze dryer and wade to make sure that they didn't lose any weight. If it doesn't lose any weight during that time, then it should be dry two hours ago. If it's thicker on the trays, then I'll go a longer time, three or four hours for my minimum weight check to make sure that it's had a time, enough time, so that the heat can transfer up through the trays or down from the heater above and get to the center to make sure that it's driven off all that moisture. So I'll use the down arrow and bypass the rest of it. Open the drain valve. With the pressure equalized, we can open the chamber. The tray one. Okay, and there's no change. And that's the only thing that we're looking for is no change. If there has been a drop, then they'll be going back in. And if there's any drop on any one tray, I will usually put the whole thing back in because then I don't have to worry about bagging part of them now and part of them later. Okay, tray two also had no change. Tray three, no change. And tray four and make sure that there's that it's not touching it's not and no change on that one now we can turn the machine off i'm going to use no defrost and those look great and the one that was on the bottom shelf and the top shelf have a nicer color so i think the slightly lower temperatures that those have might be the difference because they were all out of the same batch of peaches so we'll check that. None of the additional time resulted in any weight loss. So we know that they were dry way back before we started the additional time for the weight check. And because I'd added a little bit more time last night to make sure that it was still going this morning when I was ready to check, we only know for sure that it was dry at 42 hours. It was probably dry before that, but we don't know that. So we're going to use 42 as the how long did that batch take to dry. Get the little defrost baffle in place and the fan. Okay. Next, we'll get the power usage. So that batch 
processed that way it took 29.05 kilowatt hours. We'll reset that and get it ready for the next batch. Now we'll get the final weights of the peaches with the thermometers removed and do the calculations on how much a pound of the peaches weighs now. Okay, tray one. 876, 863, 875, 871. Got that batch worked out. This goes in my permanent notebook along within the computer. But that way, if I can't access the computer for whatever reason, I still have the information about that batch. So I have the date that it went in, the batch number, what it is, and then the gross weight before it was freeze dried, the tear weight of all the trays and paper, and then the net weight before it was freeze dried. they have got the dry check information, but that's meaningless and only useful for that instance to check, is it losing weight still? That's the only use of that. And then I've got the gross weight after and then the net weight afterwards. Now it's 494 grams of peaches. So it's just over a pound of peaches now as it's dried. It was almost seven and a quarter pounds. So I plan on bagging them in three quarter pound bags. Now it's 51 grams. Approximately 51 grams equals three quarters of a pound. And that would need about 288 grams of water back in to get it back to three quarters of a pound. I, I have the batch number already written on the bags ready for the label. We'll get the labels real quick and then come back. I find it very interesting that the coldest tray and the next coldest tray actually look nicer than the other two trays. I mean, these look great, but you can see the inside versus the outside edge they did discolor a little bit, whereas the other two trays that were at a lower temperature really didn't. And it's slightly lower temperature. So I'm going to try the next batch of peaches. I'm going to turn down the tray heater settings to maybe 105 degrees instead of 120 and see what that does for them. I would love to have this brighter color. Uh, though, again, there's nothing really wrong with these. It's just that I like that better. Okay, now the labels. And I'm just using Open Office for my labels. Got the information on there. I need nine of these and then one that I can fill in depending on how much I have left. It's going to be just under a half pound. So I'll go ahead and print four sets like this. That will give me eight. And print. Okay, I need one more at three quarters a pound and then one with less. So on this, I'm going to just go ahead and leave that blank and this blank and I'll fill that in because it's going to be a little less than a half pound and I can fill in what's left and do the math for it. And then we'll print that one. I forgot, one of the viewers had mentioned that I should probably switch this stuff around so that the what it is is the most prominent size on the label. And that makes perfect sense, but I forgot because it should have big, bold, sliced peaches and then smaller for the rest of the information because it's really less important if you're trying to find it. Or maybe for us, because batch number is important, maybe we would leave these big but make this even bigger then these other things could become much smaller because we don't need this anywhere near this size. Sliced peaches would be much more important to have big in comparison to the amount that it is and how to deal with it. Oh well, I forgot again. It's so interesting that this screen doesn't really show up on this camera, but it does on that camera. It needs 68 grams. I'm going to start with tray well, whatever tray this one is. Oh no, not 68. Yeah, I'm going with 51 grams so I can get three quarters of a pound. Yeah, so I'm going to be plus or minus a little bit. So that's pretty close to three quarters of a pound. Kind of shake them down to settle them in there. And then it'll be closable, barely. So 
So 34 grams would be a half pound. So this one's about a half pound. So we'll put that information on there. And these are mine to snack. It's like the little red hen. If you do the work, you get the snacks. Oh wow, those are good. So I'm using 300 cc oxygen absorbers once again, and I'll do a video soon showing how we test them. Uh, we get them by the thousand, so 110 pack. And so since that last six months or something like that, we like to test them to make sure that they're still up to what they're supposed to be when we do finally use them. Okay, get that cut open. You can see the sensor turning color real quickly. And get one in each bag. I'm going to tuck them down the side a bit so it stays out of the zipper. And I try to kind of move them over as I go so I don't lose my place. Now we'll get them zippered shut. But these zippers are not a substitute for heat sealing. But I do like to zipper them because it, besides the fact that it does do something, it does slow down the oxygen or air movement in there a little bit. It also helps keep the bag tight in the seal area. So it makes it a lot easier when it comes time to seal them. Now we'll get these heat sealed. I'm using an Impact brand one, which is what Harvestrite was sending out with their machines six years ago. Uh, this has a five millimeter wide heat strip. Okay, and on mine, because it doesn't have the little silicone piece, I do the first one twice to make sure that it's all the way up to melty temperature. I'm sealing it very high on the bag. I'm double checking it, make sure that it actually does function. We do a test of the machine itself every so often. So I've got it high up on the bag in case I need to do it over because I messed up or if I want to cut off the seal and reuse it and still be able to seal it above the zipper. One final step that we do before we put them on the shelves is we weigh them and put that information on the bag. So 75 grams. So this bag weighs 75 grams right now. As the gross weight, we'll know if we've got a bad bag and something starts getting in. And if it's bouncing between two numbers, we'll take the higher number. When you're filling your bags, if you've filled them very evenly, like I try to do, and this time I succeeded, one of the things that weighing them at the end and putting that weight on can tell you is if you missed an oxygen absorber. All of these bags are 75 or 76 grams, except for the half pound one, of course. If I missed an oxygen absorber, it would be noticeably different than all the others. So it's kind of like one more check before you put them on the shelves. Now, these are ready to store long term or to snack on tomorrow. So next batch is going to be another batch of peaches, at least in our freeze dryer. If I video that, we'll have another batch of peaches. Thanks for watching.